Hi, welcome to One Wonder Day. I'm Sophia Pilot, into the universe of Chinese. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for spending time with me today on this special, you know, celebration of love uh, season. And actually, I structure my whole February um, expressions around the theme of love because, I mean, what's our loved object? It's lovable person. And I'm finding out uh, all different Chinese expressions to attribute to describe, to commentating, or sometimes very judging of what's considered beautiful or lovable in Chinese. So, all right, today we're going to talk about yan ran yi xiao. Okay, yan ran yi xiao is describing somebody's smile. So yesterday we have a xiao xiao tian qi. It has this easily bursting or giggling female figure that's energetic. I give you an image of a female representation, an uh, actress, uh, uh, popular in China, um, to to visualize that, right? And today I have a different actress um, to interpret yan ran yi xiao. It's a different type of smile. Um, very subtle difference. Okay, here's my job to unpack with you. By looking at the sub-character level, which means go under the components of what made up of this fact of character, then we can understand better what that character is actually about. Because in contemporary translation, say I just translate a sweet, there are all kinds of sweetness, like what you're talking about, what, why <laughs> sweetly smile? Like what does that mean exactly? So here is exactly what that is. Sweet, in this case, is made of a girl image, a female image like this, with the, you know, the arm crossing here, kind of doing this, showing submissiveness of a female. At the beginning, I only know, okay, because in contemporary Chinese, we use female nu as like ladies room, we would put a sign nu in there. There is only gender marker. There's no age. You're just gender versus non, right? But, when I'm digging a little bit deeper, this new actually means unmarried woman. So basically virgins in Chinese, um, because yes, you know, ancient church society, there's no such thing as a girl expose herself to the outside world besides her own family members. That's the, um, the societal confinement on a girl. So when a girl was unmarried, for sure it's a virgin. So virginal behavior would be this uh, arms crossed image. So that's a, a girl. Now on the right side, you see a lot of, a lot of these drapey things around. That's the feathers. And I guess this is the head of the little bird. So <clears throat> according to scholars, this image, quite complicated. I cannot replicate. I cannot replicate. In contemporary, it's kind of, yeah, we put it more writable. Even in contemporary, when I write it, it, it takes a long time to write all oh, that many strokes. And I see ancient um, Chinese, this is already somebody standardized it. Uh, I probably came even crazier than this writing. By crazier, I mean more realistic, more nonlinear. There, there would be lines that go so free form. You feel like you cannot draw it. It's like a painting. You cannot do the lines uh, right. So this is already standardized. So in a sense, it's more writable, um, but it gives you the sense of like all oh, these part, drapey part are the feathers of the little bird. And this is the head of the little bird. So the whole thing is a young bird paired with a virgin, okay? Together, it means sweet. Okay, can, can you make the connection of the dots? Young, um, a young bird and a young girl have a certain sweetness. I guess in, in contemporary understanding, it means they are unexperienced. They are not Eve, so to speak. But they come with this nature original setting of, I guess, being willing to learn, being curious, being charming in their young way. And that's the type of sweetness that comes 
in there. Even if we translate in English as sweet, it came from this young bird and young girl. And you can pack in all that usefulness, that naivete element into it because you go under the sub character level to understand where it came from. Okay. Ran, I translate as lit, so sweet lit. Um, it's combined together to describe the kind of smile. It's a sweet, well, I, I use lit to mean it's this ran actually is a depictor of sweet. So when in English, when we are depicting sweetness as an action, uh, because sweetness is already depicting something else, right? When we are depicting the depictor, <laughs> it becomes adverb. And it's this lit thing. That's why. Okay, so this lit is made of the meat on here, the dog on here, and the fire. So the fire is the cone shape with two sparkles. And the dog is the, the nozzles of the dog, the ears of the dog, and the full body of the dog look like that. And this kind of a question mark with two side slanted strokes is a meat symbol. So dog meat on fire. That's dog barbecue. A few episodes ago, earlier um, last year, I have one episode dedicated to what this genre is about. So dog bar, actually in my, okay, in my Chinese crash course three, I talk about this you know, bad, the bad in Chinese language. The bad meaning according to contemporary yardstick of moral sense. Barbecue dog is the same, right? It's inhumane, like bad treatment of your beloved pet. But in ancient times, dog barbecue was a thing and actually become so common. It became a Kind of a common denominator <laughs> to describe not only the aroma, the energy, the food source, it's giving, it's a survival thing, right? Uh, it gives you the whole sense of the vibe of something. Therefore, I translate it as the vibe and sweet vibe. That's that's the whole picture there. That's this young girl, young bird vibe. <laughs> okay. Yi xiao. Okay. Chinese use Xiao is the action, right? But can you count a smile in Chinese? Actually, I guess in English, we have one laugh, give out a laugh or give a smile. In English, we do use e to describe the smile, just one of it. <laughs> I guess smile as an action. I guess you can count it because you make one smile, that's one. And then many smiles, smiles a lot, right? Um, it's countable, I guess. So in Chinese, we have this one smile thing. That means just a quick, fast going, um, non lasting, ephemeral facial expression. So this smile doesn't like hold still there for a long time. It's just one thing and then a change expression. So that flash of smile, right? That's the yi xiao, give you the sense. It's just one and then it's gone. Okay, yi. Anybody who learned Chinese just a tiny little bit know that one line is yi, two lines are two, three lines are three. Um, <laughs> just like that. That's how Chinese, actually in, when Ch Chinese write three, we write top down, but we make sure the middle line is shorter than the other two lines, because according to some scholars who like to assign meanings to things like I'm doing right now, uh, the top line is the sky or the heaven, bottom line is the earth or heaven and earth, right? Uh, that's our parameters, our space of existence, the middle line is us, whatever stories have our history happening as in between heaven and earth. So that's the, you know, three lines. So by itself, it's the heaven, the one line, the starting point of everything. Okay, xiao, we have this bamboo on the top and this 
fast walker, power walker at the bottom. So the two signs are both of them using as capturing the, the movement of what bamboo is looking mostly bamboo are going to sway back and forth in the wind. They are they're very bendable, they don't break. That's the feature of bamboo. So oftentimes they're not standing straight, like stiff. They're very supple. They go with the wind. And that's the bamboo. Now, fast walker, when you walk fast, like make a big stride, right? This is like a starfish figure with the head bending toward one direction. Like you're, you're kind of fast walking. And when you're fast walking, you're kind of leaning forward, going toward the direction you're going, right? You have to shift, keep shifting your weight distribution, go in the direction of where you're going. This between, this weight shifting between your left and right legs, right? It's, ha uh, it's facilitated by having this leaning forward thing. I guess you can try. You you can actually lean backward, but walk forward. But that's a lot of more efforts and unnatural for us. So when you power walk, um, your this forward leaning thing paired with this bamboo supple movement of leaning left and right, <laughs> um, gives you the sense of when a person's laughing. Oftentimes their body are relaxed. They are going to leaning one way or the other. So that. Um, similar shared um, human body language is then uh, kind of using the two reference points to coin what what would be hard to depict. What happened? Like you cannot really visualize a smile, smile, and you have to use this reference point to mean okay, bamboo bending, fast walking. Then together it forms you a picture, a behavior comparison with two other things to give you the sense of smile. Okay, so one smile, yan ren xiao, young bird, young girl type of smile. Okay, who is the representation? Okay, it's Crystal Liu. And she was famous in Chinese, um, I guess a history period um, uh, dramas. So it's most likely like a sometime like thousands years ago so that she can wear all that fancy, you know, gears like a long necklace and all kind of fancy head gears and I have fancy clothing. Um, I guess you can project however you want to idealize the ancient society of how people wear, um, wear their outfit out every day. And you can beautify in that way that's kind of missing in contemporary life because our contemporary outfit, our apparel and accessories are... I guess more for the efficiency of living. You don't really have long dangling earrings unless you're going to some big occasions, right? Um, but everyday life is efficiency, it's economy, it's you know fit into the fast pace of today's life. But in ancient times, they have elaborate long gowns and uh, you know brocaded um, apparels, and for that, it's not really equipped for everyday people's living, right? So. This costume paired with her look, like her face somehow bring out, you know, the, the projected ideal of the ancient time. Well, and because she, I guess in, in this frame, um, she shows as a young girl, definitely a virgin, right? Supposedly, I mean, yeah. And the pinkish color theme also uh, related to the young age, the tender, Ness of a young girl and when she gives you just a glimpse a tiny flick of smile and that's enough of power voltage <laughs> to whoever is fortunate enough to view i mean it's tv viewers okay see that and all the guys are going to be zinc uh, by okay oh my god i'm so charmed by this young girl young bird ish innocent um smile but powerful smile like that's the power the use to uh, the innocence of it adds to the the sweetness um that's smile sweetly in yan ran yan ran yi xiao all right continue to the currency of thinking by one word a day with sophie see you another day